Okay, I think we are live. Just let me know if you can hear me okay. Just let everybody jump onto the stream a second here. Because today we're going to be talking about yet another UK city going bankrupt. So just let everybody jump into the stream a second, let the comments catch up. Good, I think that's just about everybody into the stream here. Perfect. Okay, where is everybody from today? Drop in the chat, I'd love to know. Um, <clears throat> and just another thing, I've just gotten back home, which is great after a month of traveling. It is absolutely freezing. And no, I'm not exaggerating when I use that word. In fact, hold on, let's just load up. Look, it is freezing. Yes, this is in Celsius right now. I don't know what the temperature is exactly, but it's absolutely freezing right now. So uh, we'll see how we get on. But I blasted my heating on and uh, we should be good in a second. So let's have a look at today then. Good. I can see there's a lot of UK people on. You're probably freezing as well at the minute. <clears throat> so we're going to um, talk today about this new city that's just declared bankruptcy. So this is Nottingham City, which funny enough is one of the ones I forecast a couple of months back here. And I want to start with, in fact, let's go to the shared screen straight away. Let's go on to the shared screen a second. Here we go. So this is what we've just had. Nottingham City has declared itself bankrupt. Um, and it, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy that another one has gone. In fact, I've got something I wanted to show you. Yes, I pulled this up because I thought this would be more entertaining to look at this. So this is the UK or let's just say England specifically. And we can see here who is currently in financial distress. And if you look back before 2018, you wouldn't have really seen anyone in financial distress. But now we've just had Birmingham, who declared bankruptcy. Uh, Nottingham is another one that's just done it. We had Thurrock, uh, Croydon, Slough, Woking, and then the ones in orange are the ones that may issue um, very shortly. So that's Medway, we have Hastings, uh, Havering, Southampton, Somerset, uh, Coventry, my old stomping ground, my old city, uh, Leicester, etc. And then the ones that are in yellow are the ones that <clears throat> are most likely as well to declare bankruptcy as well. Uh, and this is, some of these are forecasts for 2024. So when you look at it on the big map, it doesn't seem uh, that crazy, but actually it is a lot of councils when you, when, you, um, when you think about it that are having these massive issues right now. They're having massive financial distress. Uh, the, 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 the thing is once a... <clears throat> once a council does declare this bankruptcy, it's pretty much game over. So I'll just go over a few of the notes that I made there then. So what they do is they declare this 114, section 114 notice, and Northampton was the first to do so in 20 years. So that was one of the first ones that did it. Then it was Slough, Croydon, uh, Thurrock, Woking, Birmingham, which we covered recently, and then Nottingham has just announced uh, as well. And the Local Government Association has warned that 90% of local authorities, that's councils, are using dwindling reserves to operate. And 26 councils, this is not me saying it, this is the government, 26 councils are at risk of bankruptcy in the next two years. That is a lot of councils. And 25% of all councillors believe it's likely their council will go bankrupt in the next five years. It's, I mean, this is staggering. This is the United Kingdom we're talking about here. This is one of the, at one time, wealthiest countries, and it just shows you what's happening. And 
I was going through a lot of the stats to find out what the reasons are, what are they saying are the reasons for this problem. And <clears throat> they're blaming it on the government, of course, pulling out of the EU. They said they had more funding before from the EU. They're blaming it on inflation. Also, government not um, offering enough support. They're saying that new people coming into the city are overwhelming services. So there's all these things that they're talking about. So again, Nottingham's going to cut back on all non-essential services now. And they had a £23 million overspend, which is a lot for a council. Social care, they said, was the other one. Uh, a rise in homelessness. In fact, they used the word precipitous rise in homelessness and the impact of inflation. They're saying, in other words, what we've been talking about, what we know, that people have become poorer, they're having a lot more difficulties. So more people are... And when they say homeless, remember that doesn't necessarily mean out on the street in a sleeping bag. What that can mean is that, you know, you have a, someone has a family and they can't afford to pay <coughs> the rent anymore. So they have to go to the council and then the council will find them some sort of temporary housing. If you're just joining the stream, um, I'm, I'm struggling a bit tonight, but you know my... my um, ethos is if you're feeling a little bit rough, you just come from a hot climate and you've just come into below freezing temperatures and it's hit you in the sinuses and hit you hard, you just double down, never let your subscribers down, just double down and uh, as long as you don't mind <coughs> this, then I don't mind either because I've made sure to spend a few hours today making these notes, so I'm going to deliver it no matter what. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is Nottingham Council we're talking about. And the council leader, David Mellon, is, uh, this was the thing that made me laugh as well. He said that he intends to remain in his role. even So even though he is part of the problem, he said, you know, it's as if like, well, I've caused the problem, so I need to stay here to solve the problem. Um, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. So what are they going to do to fix this then? Well, they, they're they declaring bankruptcy. They're going to cut all the uh, non-essential services right away. And here's the one that made me laugh. This is the one that's really interesting. <clears throat> they're going to charge landlords a fee. So there's 30,000 landlords, they say, uh, or, or 30,000 rental properties in Nottingham. And they say that they're going to start this licensing scheme. And the licensing scheme is to improve the housing stock, which on the face of it, you hear that and you say, that's great. I'm all for that. If that helps get rid of rogue landlords where you have moldy walls and the toilet doesn't flush. and You know, you know the sort of thing. Um, if you're my age, you've probably been through one of these houses at one point or another. You know, so there are some rogue landlords still out there. So you think to yourself, okay, 30,000 of these, and they're going to put this scheme in to uh, make it better. And then you start looking into it a little bit more, and you see it's just a massive taxation scheme. So they did this in Birmingham. They also did it in Coventry, which, funny enough, are two cities, one that has declared bankruptcy, the other is close to declaring bankruptcy. And I've got the figures here for you. So Coventry was really high. It was over £1,000 was the fee for houses of multiple occupation, but Birmingham was just all houses, and it was £700 per property. That was the fee that a landlord had to pay. And the I looked up the average wage of an inspector. So the average wage is £35 for an hour. And again, I've gone sort of on the higher end there just to make it conservative. So let's say the inspector, because it says the inspection takes up to one hour on a house. So let's say they have to travel there, that's 30 minutes driving, 30 minutes back. And maybe there's some extra paperwork, who knows. So let's say it costs the council £70 to pay that inspector. Well, they're making a 10x return on that. So they say that all the costs go into, uh, you know, making the scheme work. But actually, when you look at the, um, the budgets and you look at the accounts, it's not. It's sort of about 80% of that is profit. And you can see that's probably where it's all going to, to balance these budgets. So all they're really doing is adding a new tax onto landlords. 
Um, some might be bad landlords. I've come across some bad landlords. But in general, most landlords I've, I uh, know, because I used to have a rental agency a, a while back, they were pretty good landlords. I would say 95% of them were all good people. So, uh, yeah, so there's a tax on the landlords here. Excuse me, one second. <laughs> Okay, continuing on. So why is the funding going down then for, for a lot of these, these councils? Well, I was looking into, I don't know if you remember the levelling up that the government did in 2021. And they said that they did this in order to um, offset the EU spending, the EU funding, shall we say. So there's a £2.6 billion fund. So I started looking into this fund to see... Well, if there's all this money, why are the councils struggling? Well, 95% of the councils are complaining that the fund is not accessible. Well, it is accessible. I went onto the website myself and looked at it all. And it's accessible, but it's very, very complicated. So you're going to end up, you know, you've got to be pretty smart, let's just say that, to be able to fill all this stuff in and figure it all out. So I think that is what the biggest issue is. The government's made it so complex, which is what governments do. They they always do this, make it really difficult. And the bureaucracy is so, uh, so in-depth, it's just way above what you need, that it's caused now issues for a lot of these councils and they can't get enough funding. In fact, it was less than half that was actually spent. And you think about that, if they actually got that money... This would have helped to avoid bankruptcy for some councils. They could have helped some of the poorer communities with a lot of um, social programs and, and things like that. Even food banks and all sorts of things, which don't typically tend to be government uh, funded. But you get the idea here. Now, it's not just Nottingham Council. That's the other thing. Middlesbrough Council are also very close to bankruptcy. So their idea is, in fact, I might even have a picture of some of these beautiful buildings. Hold on. Let's see if I've got one. Where is Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough. Here we go. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. So what they want to do is sell off some of these beautiful buildings like the town hall in order to reduce some of their debt. And I was looking through some of the figures here of some of the, the things that they want to do. And it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the reason it makes no sense, some of the, the savings that they get, they're talking about are 400,000. In fact, this was Peterborough Council. <clears throat> so this is another council. Peterborough, they're talking about 400,000 pounds saving uh, per year by selling off some of these buildings. And they'll raise a few million from it. Well, a few million, when you are in debt, tens and tens of millions, is, is pointless. These are beautiful buildings. Why would you just sell them off and then you don't know exactly what's going to happen? Although they probably would because of the planning applications and things. But they want to sell seven. So middle, uh, Peterborough want to sell 79 buildings. Middlesbrough, they want to sell the town, town hall, which is that beautiful building I just showed you. Um, golf center, the business park. Some of these are very high-earning businesses. Why would you sell off these buildings? If they are making you an income, why would you sell them off? It doesn't make sense. They also want to introduce new parking fees, licensing fees, again, on housing, uh, service charges. I mean, there's, the, there's so much here they want to do. So much. But I, I think I'll leave it there today because I just wanted to keep it short for you all as to what is actually uh, what is happening right now with all the, all of these bankruptcies. It's uh, it's not looking good for the UK at all. It's not looking good. There's a lot more bankruptcies to come. I think all we can do is just keep preparing for it. Really, if you are in the UK or well, most Western societies, uh, we've got to see how the next two or three years goes getting through the recessionary period. We'll see if they go back to lowering interest rates. I don't see it just yet. But when they do and they start creating new currency, that's when you want to keep an eye on the stock market and things like that because that's when asset prices are likely to go up. 
As soon as they reverse these interest rates, smash them down to the floor, start creating new currency, that currency's got to go somewhere. Um, in fact, I was just making some notes for the monthly macro video, which is on Patreon, by the way. I was just making some notes and looking at some of the charts here and looking what's happened at previous recessions. So it's quite interesting. I'll no doubt get that video out shortly and, and no doubt comment on a couple of these things over the coming weeks. But that's it. Just a short one today. Thanks for being online and putting up with me while I'm uh, struggling a bit tonight. But double down look after people, get the videos done, and uh, that's it. Thank, thanks a lot for watching. Take care. God bless you guys. God bless your families. I hope you're all well and healthy, and if you're in cold climate, stay warm, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the walk and talk. Fingers crossed. Let's see how, uh, let's see how cold it is. All right. Bye for now.